Well, how you doing? Welcome back to Ask the Patent Attorney, another segment right here with Vin Latempio, a uh, patent attorney over at Claw Stangler and Latempio out of Western New York. How you doing, Vin? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Uh, we've been doing these videos, and we're actually getting a little work, getting a little action on questions and some uh, different topics, and we want to move right along. And one of the topics we have, uh, one of the questions, uh, is regarding trademarks. And in the question, uh, the person who asked uh, already knew what a trademark was, but they want to know what makes a trademark better or worse, a, a bad trademark versus a good trademark. Uh, and if you could maybe even enlighten us a little bit about what a trademark is and then maybe jump off from there, Vin, we'd, we'd appreciate it. Oh, absolutely, Nate. Um, you know, first thing is we got a definition of what a trademark is. And it it's basically anything that distinguishes your business from any other business, distinguishes your goods and your services from anybody else. And how do you distinguish yourself? And and that's pretty much what a trademark is. And there, and, and, and there's different ways to do that. You could do it with words, with a logo. They actually have sounds. And here's a here's an example of some sounds that are that are trademarks. <laughs> And colors, and, he, and you'll see up here on the on the screen too some examples of schools that have registered their school colors. Um, but those are things that can be registered as trademarks. Now, now the next question is, and as you as you asked, was what makes it a good trademark to register versus a bad trademark to register? Now we've come up with this uh, spectrum of inherent distinctiveness and here's a here's an example of the slide basically and, and it goes from um, one um, extreme to the other and it starts off here with um, fanciful and you'll see a fanciful example is Kodak or Xerox something you just throw a bunch of letters in the name in, in a box and you come up with a name uh, the, the, the next one is uh, arbitrary and you see a, a trademark like Apple which it has a real meaning it's not a fanciful made-up name but it, it distinguishes their company. And as soon as I said Apple, you automatically thought of their, their Apple design, the, the look and what the computer might, um, looks like. It, it just instantly pops in your mind. Those are very, very strong trademarks. I mean, they distinguish themselves from everybody else. Now, if you move down uh, that spectrum line, you'll see that the next is suggestive. And I try to tend to tell um, new people coming up with new trademarks to lean towards those suggestive ones because it's very hard to get um, actual distinctiveness for these arbitrary. I mean, if you come up with some arbitrary name to start your company, no one's really going to know what it's for if you, you know, just like a Kodak was here for the first person with Kodak and you don't have the millions of dollars to brand it like that. And so everybody wants to lean towards the, you know, the next um, one, which is descriptive, Joe's Camera Shop or, or, or Tom's Dry Cleaning. I mean, those are so descriptive that they're really valueless and they're, they're I consider, bad trademarks because because um, basically they want you to um, um, just use something that's so descriptive and, and it just doesn't distinguish yourself from anybody else. And then finally, the worst is generic. And, and generic is probably not too bad of an idea if it becomes generic. I mean, if you're um, rollerblade or linoleum or, as or um, aspirin or um, even... Um, What's at the moving staircase? Uh, escalator. Uh, escalator. Escalator was a, a started off as a trademark, and you know, hmm. people just call it generic. So you don't want your your trademark to become generic. But if you became generic, you probably sold millions of dollars of it. And people, I mean, I if your your mother tells you, hey Nate, go to the the um, store and get some Kleenexes. Well, you might come home with a box of Scott tissues. You know, you're just because because generic. Sure. You know, you know, so you want them to go to the market and come home with a box of facial tissues made by Kleenex and then and then right. then Kleenex will be happy cuz you're you're buying it that's that's what makes it you know, a strong But a even strong still trademark. I mean you're putting a name like uh Kleenex, <clears throat> Windex, Escalator, uh, Linoleum. I mean, yeah. you're putting that in the vernacular. I mean, you might as well sit back and you've got a, a bit, you know, a company that's going to be outliving everyone because well, so it's, if you made it's it, part yeah, of the yeah, ingrained in the culture. So it's, although generic is bad for a trademark, if, if you were able to get to that point, it means you must have made millions of dollars and sold millions of those. If, to right, get to right. That point. But that's, yeah. you know, that's not as easier said than done. But I let's guess. stick with, you know, you're the, the new inventor. You're coming up with this new um, product. 
or a new business and you want to come up with a name, you gotta you gotta pick a name that's strong and that they'll be registerable. Now, if you try to pick um, one of these fanciful marks, there's a really good chance of you being registered. No one, as long as nobody else has actually used it first. I mean, you can't use Kodak, obviously it's always already taken. But if you mix up those letters and you're fanciful, you're you're gonna get registered. You know, the closer you get to descriptive. The closer you get to, um, um, you know, maybe you're like the Western New York um, Dairy Association, you know, all of a sudden you're geographically descriptive. And chances of that are, are, are going gonna, gonna to be against you getting getting right. registered. So, you know, the, the West Side, you know, rowing club or something. Sure. Well, you know, one thing I would like to bring generic. up, and uh, we have a couple seconds here, and one of the things is, you know, if you see something in a movie, <clears> something in a comic book, something that becomes popular, you almost can pull it out of thin air. Now, without having a business attached to it, um, could I get a trademark for something that I've just sort of come up with sitting around in my basement? Uh, to make a further, uh, to enhance this a little further, I noticed when I was watching a commercial for an Android phone or a droid phone, uh, on the bottom it said LucasArts. LucasArts Films owns a was trademarked by LucasArts and they had the word droid. And that comes from the Star Wars films because he came up with this name for the robots that was different and now they wanted to use this name because it's popular and then they were able to use it for their business and then but they own that you know that well that absolutely name i mean they own the name and they must have registered it you know i'm sure these movie um, moguls they have millions of dollars they could register it's a little bit different yeah, yeah. sure and so and they have the the power to say look if you start using it we're going to sue you so i'm sure they 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 have that ability to um to to really put the pressure on and force you to pay the pay that royalty and that's and that's why you register it and, and that's what we're going to talk about in our next episode about you know what are the benefits of gaining from registration so here you know just to sum it up real quick you know the you're when you're choosing your name you want to lean towards arbitrary and fanciful and suggestive and stay away from descriptive and generic names and the highly descriptive you have to have some sort of fanciful you know like dunkin donuts in there when you're picking your name and that'll be make it a lot easier for you to register the mark great thanks vin and uh thanks for watching hope to get some more of your questions here for vin latempio and ask the patent attorney and we'll be uh right back here with another one soon yeah Thank i appreciate you. that as many questions as you can we, we we're willing to take them and in fact we we were offering a free patent search for um, any question that we actually use on the show you can ask the questions down here right here at youtube or or through our uh facebook or or um, even Twitter. If you want to tweet us, we'll, we'll look for those questions. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Okay, thank you.